is Sister Helena Raphael Burns from the Daughters of St. Paul. Welcome to the first session of From Ritual to Relationship. Let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in His consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, Queen of the Apostles, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first session in our three-part series is Why Rituals? Rituals are Human. When I was asked to do this spirituality series, I immediately said yes because I loved the title, From Ritual to Relationship. Of course, we're ultimately talking about Catholic rituals and our relationship with God. But in this first session, we're going to back it up and talk about rituals in general. I think we can have this idea that rituals are formalistic and rigid, whereas relationships are informal and free-flowing. So the two are mutually exclusive, on either end of the spectrum and diametrically opposed. But nothing could be further from the truth. At the outset, I'm going to give you the conclusion and say that we need both rituals and relationships in our lives, especially with regard to God. Now, what is the nature of rituals? Why do humans instinctively create rituals? Rituals help us make sense of the world. They highlight the meaning of our lives. Rituals have many uses to initiate, to focus, remember, celebrate, commemorate, unite, galvanize, identify, transform. What makes a ritual good or bad? A good ritual is organic. It comes about naturally connected to authentic happenings and values. It's imminent and transcendent at the same time, meaning it roots us in the present while also going beyond time and space to include the past and the future. And a good ritual is part of a bigger, purposeful whole. A good ritual is true. A bad ritual is not organic. It's agenda-driven, forced and imposed on us. It doesn't bring us beyond ourselves or itself. It's self-referential. A bad ritual is unintegrated, disintegrated, and fragmented, not making us part of something wholesome that is bigger than ourselves. A bad ritual is false. Rituals also make us think of stories, traditions, history, order, rules, laws, rites, rites of passage, and symbols. And rightfully so, they're all connected. Rituals are part of larger systems that contain all of these. And aren't systems fascinating? We can have something as gargantuan as a solar system and something as tiny as a developing digestive system in a baby in the womb. People study systems and manage systems, for example, with computer technology. Human-made systems, such as political systems, have a logic within themselves and therefore can hold together, but if their premises, their foundations are false, deceptive or oppressive, then the whole system is actually rotten and cannot last. God's system, if we can call it that, is probably better thought of as the divine order. Isn't that beautiful? The divine order. The divine order is everywhere, including within the Trinity itself. The divine order encompasses all things, seen and unseen, visible and invisible, physical and spiritual. All of creation, all the laws of nature, the angels, human endeavors. Just as there are physical laws governing the universe, there are spiritual laws as well. Just as there are automatic consequences for physical laws that are kept or broken, there are automatic consequences for spiritual laws that are kept or broken. Good and evil actions and omissions, thoughts, words, motivations. Traditions are also very human and ritualistic. Don't we love to repeat something each year as a family or a group of friends? It might be something as simple as decorating for the seasons. 
It might be a seasonal or religious event. It might be an inside joke or a sport or a meal. It might be a song or a trip or an outside activity. Kids especially love traditions. And as they grow older and older, they love being able to take more and more part in those traditions. Human traditions are not trivial. They're historical. They create memories and deepen friendships and family ties. Catholic tradition, with a capital T, is divine help from God the Holy Spirit so that the magisterium, which is the teaching office of the church, will be free from error and keep us in God's truth throughout the centuries. It also authentically interprets the Bible as God intended for us to understand it. Once, when I was in a theology class, the professor tried to destroy all tradition, secular and religious, by asking the question, do you know who wrote the song, happy birthday to you? The lyrics or the melody? No one in the class did. Mind you, this was before the internet. She proceeded to actually say, see, traditions are irrelevant and always need to be updated because we don't even know where they come from or what they were originally used for or how people understood them in the past. We're more enlightened today and need to embrace constant change. But you know what? Just because we didn't know where the happy birthday song came from didn't mean that A, nobody could find out where it came from, even without the internet, and B, that it wasn't a good tradition that still works and everybody enjoys it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So once I was teaching some young people about the sacraments, and I was trying to make the point that you can't really change biblical symbols or symbols that God gives us, but you could change potentially human symbols. So I asked them what the mascot of their school was, and it was a bulldog. So I said, well, you know, you don't have to have a bulldog. You could change the bulldog. Well, <laughs> I guess not because I got some fierce backlash on that. They told me that, no, the bulldog has been around for 25 years and his collar, the studs on his collar mean something. And his tooth was pointing to the North for when they won that championship in the North. And oh my goodness gracious, um, I got such a blowback on that. So these young people taught me that even human traditions and symbols can be powerful touchstones with reality that aren't easily replaced. Even animals have rituals, sometimes elaborate rituals. Check out grebes. They're a waterfowl that do a very elaborate courtship dance on the water. And animals have mourning rituals when one of their own dies, elephants. These animal rituals are carried out from the pure instinct that God put in them, but it just goes to show that there are extremely good reasons for rituals, and they often happen at auspicious moments in our lives. Imagine our lives without rituals. No pregnancy announcement, no baby shower, no first word, no first step, no tooth fairy, no first day of school, no first best friend, no learning to ride a bike, no first job, no first paycheck, no first crush, no first date, no first driver's license, no graduation, etc. It would kind of say, who cares, wouldn't it? And collectively, no rituals would mean no birthday parties, no parties of any kind, no parades, no campfire stories, no special seasonal recipes, no concert going, no dances, no anniversaries, no celebrations, no team sports, no holidays. Is this making you depressed? It should be, because ritual is a huge part of what makes life worth living, to quote Fulton Sheen. You've probably heard someone say, I'm spiritual, but not religious. We can also be religious, but not spiritual. These two different modes, so to speak, might mean relationship without ritual and ritual without relationship. But since we are both body and soul, we need both. In a sense, religion is of the body. Think about it. Spirituality is of the soul. And we want to keep body and soul together because we're one person. What's the definition of death? The separation of body and soul. 
we need to do something physically about our beliefs and relationships so that we're not living in an illusion and we need to have living relationships to go with our rituals. Otherwise, they can be just an empty going through the motions. The very word religion is from relegare, to bind. Who doesn't want to be bound to God? Sign me up! We might think that rituals are of the head and relationships are of the heart, but we should use our head and our heart for both. We might think that rituals are exterior and relationships are interior, but both are both. Now, do we do rituals in order to give or to get? Once again, both. So to say something like, I don't go to mass because I don't get anything out of it is a moot point. However, as we'll see in a minute, if you don't have sufficient knowledge of what you're doing in a ritual or what it's all about, of course you won't get anything out of it. And you won't even know what or how to give during the ritual. I highly recommend Scott Hahn's book, The Lamb's Supper, which explains both the earthly and cosmic dimensions of what's happening at Mass. There's something called, shall we say, that dang Catholic and. It was actually a Protestant theologian that talked about that. The dang Catholic and. Meaning that as Catholics, we're not dualists. We don't take two things that go together separate them and oppose them to each other. We keep things that go together, together. Human beings are creatures that seek truth. Our minds were made for the truth. We must seek it, and when found, hold fast to it, conform ourselves to it. G.K. Chesterton said, an open mind, like an open mouth, must close on good food. Otherwise, the good food will fall out. Human beings are creatures that seek God. Our whole being was made for God. We must seek Him and when found, hold fast to Him and conform ourselves to Him. However, we are not capable of conforming ourselves to God and transforming our lives in Him and to Him on our own. This is why we need both rituals and a relationship with God. Human beings are creatures that seek communion with others. Human beings are the most social creatures on the planet. The higher the animal form and intelligence, the longer the gestation, the longer infants need to stay with mom and dad to grow and learn. Humans go insane and can even die in isolation. As Catholic Christians, our rituals not only unite us horizontally with our fellow Catholics on earth, but also vertically with God and the communion of saints in eternity. The church militant on earth, the church suffering in purgatory, and the church triumphant and glorious in heaven are all united, helping one another. If we don't understand what's happening in a ritual, we'll be bored, agitated, confused, and mystified. And if we attend the ritual at all, we won't be able to enter into what's being said, done, and manifested. As mentioned, it's vitally important that those who are to partake of a ritual have knowledge of what's taking place. The more profound and intimate our knowledge of the ritual, the more we'll both get and give by participation. Religion isn't just caught, as the saying about religious education went from the 1970s. It's caught and taught. So a thought, reap an action. So an action, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, reap a destiny. I read an essay from an Orthodox scholar which said, bad catechesis makes atheists. We have to be very clear and thorough in how we talk about God, instruct others about God, about his divine order, his ways. I would add that a lack or neglect of good catechesis can also make atheists of Christians. Now, evangelicals often ask us, do you have a personal relationship with God or Jesus? What do you say? People can tend to think that to have a personal relationship with Jesus means feeling something, the feels, something emotional, not necessarily, and sometimes not at all. Once when I was in Calgary, a young couple came up to me at a parish and she was Catholic 
and he had just gone through RCIA. And he said to me, he had a Christian background, and he said, you know, sister, I was thinking about becoming Catholic, you know, to join my wife uh, in being Catholic. And I went through the RCIA program, and I believe it's all true, but I didn't feel to actually become Catholic at Easter because I didn't have any special feeling. And nothing special happened to me to like as a sign that I should go ahead and become Catholic. So what I told this young man was, you don't actually need that. If you believe this is true and God has brought you into these circumstances and you've come this far, it's okay to go ahead. He thought he was being dishonest because he hadn't had any special religious experience. A year later, I was back in Calgary and this same couple came up to me and they were beaming. And the young husband said to me, sister, I did it. I became Catholic. He said, because what you said about not having to have feelings and not comparing myself with other people's experience of God made me realize that there was nothing stopping me to becoming Catholic, nothing stopping me from going ahead in my relationship with God. Feelings or emotions are only one third of what it means to be human. Human beings are like a little trinity of mind, will, and heart. Our founder, the Daughters of St. Paul's founder, Blessed Father James Alberione, told us that the most complete description Jesus ever gave of himself was, I am the way, the truth, and the life, because it corresponds to the whole human person, mind, will, and heart. Jesus is the truth for our mind, the way for our will, and the life for our heart. Feelings can be indicators that we should analyze. Why am I feeling this way or that way? What should I do with these feelings? But constant good feelings or emotions in any relationship are not realistic. Feelings come and go and we can't force or produce good feelings. Good feelings can be a bonus in our relationships. Love is ultimately of the will. We choose to love. St. Thomas Aquinas defines love as willing and doing the good of the other, which usually involves some form of self-sacrifice. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states that strong feelings are not decisive for morality or holiness for persons. They're simply an inexhaustible reservoir of images and affections in which the moral life is expressed. That's number 1768 in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So again, when you're asked, do you have a personal relationship with God? What do you say? I hope you say yes, because everyone on the planet has a relationship with God, on his side at least. If he ceased to be in relationship with us for even a nanosecond, we would cease to exist. God holds us in life through his love. God didn't just create us, he also sustains us in being. If God were to stop giving us life, we would cease to exist. If God were to stop loving us, we would cease to exist. His love is his life and his life is his love. The question is never, does God love me? Because the answer is always an unequivocal yes. God is love. Love is his very nature. The question always is, do I love God? How can we know if we love God? The Bible says by loving our neighbor, but not only that, we can and must love God directly in himself and for himself as well. And how do we do that? If you love me, keep my commands. And the commandments of God are not burdensome. God's commands are God's ways, God's will, and they are golden for us. All the sciences, including the social sciences, bear out that God's ways are the healthiest for our physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental health. We generally understand and accept that the most valuable things in our lives are going to take some hard work and maintenance. But often when it comes to God and religion, we act as though everything should be easy and instantaneous and spontaneous and blithe. But God is the most valuable and important and worthy of not just our efforts, but our very selves. Even atheists believe that the basic question of whether or not there even is a God is the most important question we could ever ask because it's a total game changer. I highly recommend the book, The Imitation of Christ, 
a beloved centuries-old spiritual classic that can help launch us into a dialogue with the Lord. I also highly recommend the Pauline edition of The Imitation of Christ, simply because it follows the Way Truth Life method with an application and a prayer for each chapter. Of course, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the Divine Liturgy, is the ritual of rituals and the relationship of relationships because it is the new covenant in the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Mass is when time stands still, it's suspended and eternity crashes in so that we can be present at Calvary and witness the redemption of the world, keeping the same ancient faith with our fellow Christians, saints, and martyrs down the ages. The beauty of rituals and memorized prayers is that they can sweep us up and sweep us along and do the heavy lifting for us when our faith is faltering or we just don't feel like it. Rituals and traditions can be a relief. We don't have to work that hard and construct something ourselves from the ground up. We can fall back on the tried and the true. Rituals from the hand of God are true, good, and beautiful if we do them right and can be trusted to accomplish what they signify. We can just plug into them. True Confessions time. I was always someone who chafed at rituals and structured activities, systematic ceremonies, and wrote prayers. Notice I said was. I tended to be more of a free spirit, highly creative, with a very active mind and imagination. So I always found rituals constricting, plodding, stifling, lifeless. But that was due to my lack of knowledge, not only about rituals, but also about my relationship with God. I didn't understand that those two things, rituals and relationship, were intertwined. Both the ritual and the relationship are necessary for us, for me. One leads to the other. God is the one who initiates and leads us forth in both, and we can go as deep as we wish into both. It's not about our preferences or feelings. Just like relationships, rituals can have very little to do with feelings, ultimately. Rather, it's about what God is doing in the world and in our lives and getting with that program. Thanks so much for joining us for this session of From Ritual to Relationship. God bless and see you next time.